Welcome, church family. Uh, as you know that we've been doing a series of interviews with Pastor David, and today we have a special guest, and we have, have Pastor David and Marie joining us today. And and uh, what we're doing, as you guys know, is we started a series on marriage on the family that are that's we've been streaming. We started streaming on Saturday nights, and we thought about having them come in and answer some questions and do some interviewing. Uh, what a great time this is, because as we know, all of us are now at home with our wives and with our husbands. Matter of fact, Pastor Maria was at home the other day and I saw this woman sit next to him. I was like, who are you? <laughs> it was my wife. <laughs> and so as we're now in a time where we have to be together because of everything that's going on, I thought this would be a great time to uh, hear from our pastor and hear from Marie about certain topics and questions that I fielded from our church family about marriage. And so uh, Marie, Pastor David, Welcome. It's good Thank to be here. Good Thank be. you, John. How are you guys doing? She says we're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> we are doing good, don't we? See, we are. <laughs> we're doing good. <laughs> it's so good to have you guys here, and it's always a, a blessing. You know, and the church family knows a little bit about this. I have a, a little bit of a history with uh, Pastor David and Marie. Uh, actually, Marie worked with my dad at Sears for right. many years, and then later on, there was a Bible study that was held at my parents' house. And I don't know if you guys know this, but when I when we did live at the house, what my wife and I did, we, we put little candles around where Pastor David and Marie would sit. <laughs> and then uh, we would charge you know people to come see where they sat. Uh, anyways, there's uh, you guys have a special place in my heart. And uh, you know, thinking back to as much as I can think back at six years old, have you guys have been part of my life and seeing what the Lord has done here at the church. Amen. From that's just true. that time to now. Yeah. And so that's that's really special to me. So what we're having today is an interview, questions and answers from our viewers in regards to the topics of marriage. And uh, and so my first question to you both is, how long have you been married? I think we've been shacking up for... <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, going on our 44th year. Wow. Wow. That's a long time. She thinks it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, married, being married for so long, what, what has been the key to your marriage for 44 years? That's quite a number of years. Well, I, I have to say, first of all, it's flown by, actually. It really has. 44 years. But the key to our marriage, I, we enjoy each other. I, I, I think that Dave and I just enjoy being together. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I... Trust him. I trust my husband in all things, and um, and uh, just and I, I love being in the ministry with him. Well, you married forty four years, but how long in the ministry together? Oh, I don't. I can't. Marie, uh, Marie met me when I was teaching Bible study, as you mentioned earlier. So, um, when she met me, I was already serving and teaching, and so that would have been in nineteen seventy four. And so when she became my girlfriend, she actually just settled into helping me in ministry, even, even when we were dating. And, and what I mean by that is that she'd host us things. For example, if we were having a Bible study, Marie would be the one who made sure that everybody got served their soda or whatever, cookies. So she really began right from really the beginning of our relationship to kind of like uh, work alongside of me. And so when we uh, were dating and became more serious at a certain point, uh, I said to her, I'm called by God to pastor. That's what I'm going to do. And, uh, and you need to know whether or not uh, you have a sense of being able to serve alongside of me as a pastor's wife. Now, we didn't really know what that meant at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. I just knew I was called and that I needed a woman who would support that call. And Marie, um, she, she said, basically, it was one of those Ruth to her mother-in-law kinds of comments. But mm -hmm. Where you go, I will go, and, yes, and yes. your God will be my God. And, and that's how it's always worked. And so we've never had any conflict whatsoever when it came to ministry, never. She knew exactly what she was getting into when she and I uh, began to date and moved into a more serious place. Uh, point in our relationship. So she's always been a, uh, a help in that fashion to me from the very beginning, John. 
And it, Marie, is that something that was already settling in your heart before you met Pastor? And did you already know that there was the sense of calling of being a, it's, I mean, we know it's a unique thing for a, a wife to be, for a pastor's wife. It, it's almost as there had been called as well. Was there a sense of calling in your life in that, in that sense that I'm going to be a pastor's wife? Not really, John. I, I just, when I got saved, I got saved under Dave's leadership. And, um, and I just, I just wanted to follow the Lord. And that was my, my desire. I want, you know, I, we just clicked. I mean, I, we really did. We just clicked. He'd tease me and, you know, and I'd laugh, you know, I always laughed at everything he said, you know, and, and he'd make me laugh. I mean, I enjoyed being with him and to serve God. What, what a great honor, you know, and, and, it's just been a blessing all the way around. I would never trade anything for this, for this. We have a lovely church family, you know, and I just, and, and the people, I, 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 I love being with the people, and I, and I, I really uh, support my husband. You know, he's a true teacher of the word. He loves God's word, and I'm, I've been very blessed. That's beyond amen measure. To that. Amen to that. Mm. Well, you know, 44 years and all these years together, you know, going back to the early days and thinking about all those things that you guys, your first dates, your, your everything, who said I loved you first? That's a trick question, really. <laughs> but I'm going to let him answer that. <laughs> he can tell you. <laughs> the truth? Um we we were um, we'd been together for several months already, and um, one day I asked her at my parents' house. Mm -hmm. We were at my parents' house, and I looked at her and I said to her, uh, "Marie, I said, uh, do you love me?" And she looked at me, and she took a moment to think about it. You know, it was a serious question. We hadn't spoken on those terms before, and she looks at me and she goes. Um, yes, I do. And she said, do you love me? You tell him. And I said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering if you loved me. It's you know? terrible. That's the truth. That's how it, that's the, so she said it first. She said, I love you. And I said, but she did. She said, do you love me? I said, I don't know. And then it gets worse. I mean, later on, <laughs> we were, we were dating for a while after that. And I said, Marie, if I were to ask you to marry me, what would you say? She said, I would say yes. I said, good, now I know in case I ever ask you. Mm. And I didn't ask her that day. I wasn't asking her. I was just curious, you know. He was terrible. <laughs> and Did I, you think he was going to ask you? I got flustered. Well, I was flustered. I didn't, you know. <laughs> you know just he curious. would just come up with stuff and say stuff, and it just flustered me, yeah, you know. I'm you like, know. What? So for the record, it would be Marie who said it first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it would. <laughs> well, you know, let's face it, I'm irresistible. What can you say? <laughs> that was a trick question, too. Very trick question. Marie, when did you realize that pastor was the one that God has placed in your life to be your husband? I think through the time of our dating, just dating and going to Bible study, um, sitting in, in Bible study, and, and uh, I enjoyed his company. You know, I, I, we enjoyed each other. That, uh, uh, that was something that came pretty instantaneously, mm -hmm. really. We clicked. You know, he made me laugh. You know, he made me laugh. And um, I liked that. He was funny. Yeah, Dave's real funny. He's a tease. <laughs> As you can see, I play with her a lot. You know, you know and so, um, you know, I would say that. And looking back to these years that God has just been fruitful in your marriage, everything that, you know, some of the things that we've even shared about the good times, uh, the times that were difficult, the, the growth, uh, just mm -hmm. all these things that have been part of your marriage for so many years. And, and, uh, and a lot of people look to you, both your guys' marriage as a model of marriage from how pastor teaches on Sundays and Wednesdays about his faithfulness to you and how much he loves you. 
and Marie, you sharing about how much pastor has meant to you. I mean, those, those are things that couples need today mm-hmm. to really That's glean true, from true. and to, and to look and say, we have a role model before us. And even for those who are maybe still waiting to be married and the impact of what you have your, of your marriage has had on so many people's lives in our church. And, you know, Marie, one of the next questions I going into now is, is, you know, with the 44 years of being married and, uh, and being part of the church, it probably almost seems as you guys are married to one another, that there was a, a, a bond and, and, a almost, and I don't want to say another marriage, but, a a love for the church that has come within your marriage. And, and so being married to a senior pastor, Marie, where a lot of time the church is involved, how was it and how is it being married to a senior pastor? For me, it's been wonderful. I knew his, I knew he was called to the ministry immediately. I knew that. And I, it's been a wonderful, um, how would you put it, ride. <laughs> you know, God, I, God is blessed. It's been a blessing to me to see my husband used in a mighty way. Um, he loves the Lord. Um, he loves me, his children. He, um, he loves his church, the people. He wants to teach them the, teach them the best way, the best. He wants them to be well fed. Mm. And, and uh, he's a teacher. And I am so thankful, so thankful that, that we came in contact and and I'm I'm sitting here next to him, mm. and I I I couldn't imagine my life any different. We it's just been like I said it's a it's it's a dream <laughs> come true a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dream come true. It it really is. I love the people in the church. It's you know just to see your husband being used by the Lord and is faithful faithful to me faithful to his children faithful to his church. It's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. That's so great. And, and, you know, Pastor, on the other side of that, having your wife who's so supportive of you, even in the early years of ministry, how has that really defined you as a pastor in terms of, you know, the releasing of you to do ministry? Uh, You know, one of the things that you share with us men is if your wives, those who are called to ministry, if your wife does not release you, you may not be in the right place. Oh, you're not in the right place, for sure, because your wife will be an anchor. You mm-hmm. know, one of the things that um, that I would advise every man who considers ministry, uh, considers his call as a ministry call, um, he needs to make sure his wife is very supportive of that and knows that. I, I, I'll never forget a, a man who came to my office many years ago now, John, and he was selling radio time, and he had made an appointment to come and see me. This was 35 years or more ago now. And I sat with him in my office, and as we were speaking, he was trying to get me to go on some radio station. And eventually, in our conversation, I I uh, found that he had, at one time, been a pastor. He told me, he said, I was a pastor. And I, I, I said, you were a pastor? I said, and now you, now you work for a radio company. I said, how did that happen? How did it happen that you left the ministry to become a, a salesman? There's nothing wrong with a man being a salesman, of course, you know, and all of that. He's providing for his family. But I was wondering, how did that happen? So I asked him, how is it you left pastoral ministry? to sell radio time. He said, my wife said to me, it's either me or the ministry. Mm. He said, and so I sell radio time. So no, men need to know that the wife um, is called also with her, not to be the pa- with him, not to be the pastor, mm-hmm. but to be a support. That's right. And so when Marie and I, um, and you'll remember this, I'm sure we were dating and becoming serious and and I said to her this, I said, something you need to know, Marie, all, all, you need to know this. And it was a serious conversation, not 
melodramatic but serious. I said, before there was a Marie, there's Jesus. And when there's a Marie, there's still Jesus. I said, Jesus comes before you. You need to always know that in our relationship. And guess what? She could say the same thing to me, mm -hmm. you know, that there is a Jesus. And before there was a David in my life, there was a Jesus. If you have that, if you love the Lord with all of your heart That's and you together can do that, then you'll love each other. It works that way. That's why God says, love me with all of your heart mm -hmm. and love That's your right. neighbor. Well, it starts with the Lord. And so Marie loves the Lord. She loves him deeply. And, and I do, too. Mm -hmm. And so that's a winning combination. Yes, it really is. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, I mean, I just think about even now, you know, you're, you guys are sharing this again, uh, not being able, to, if you don't have the love of Christ as you do, then the potential possibility of even being here 44 years in love with one another as you are would be a very, very difficult, almost impossible thing. That's mm -hmm. Without right. Christ, that's true. Well, you know, if you guys were then being able to define your your marriage, if we were to be able to put it in words, Marie, let me ask you first: How would you describe your marriage if we were to use just words to describe it? Words to describe it. Heavenly. <laughs> <laughs> A wonderful ride. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know, a wonderful ride. It's been wonderful. It's been challenging, but wonderful. It's um, ministry has um, molded me in, in ways that I, I didn't know. You know, it's made me um, compassionate. Um, and at the same time, um, being able to put up with things, yeah, put up with things and, and, and not get... Um, uh, the word not uh, 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 I can't remember it's a good word it's a good, it's a good yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you I'm sorry but but I just uh, it, it challenging but wonderful wonderful you know you come into with you come in you come and, and you see people and everybody has different personalities everybody does you know and you learn to adjust to them which is a good thing mm -hmm. you know because I need that. It's, I, I need to be adjusted to people. I need to care for them and love them just as they are. And that, that has, I really feel like my, the Lord has grown me up in that, loving people. Not that I didn't love them before, but I, I just, I want to see them through the eyes of His. That's awesome. And then how would you say, Pastor, if you were to use words to describe your marriage? You know what, there's, there's I'm a, a first Timothy. First Timothy 3 says that a pastor is to be a lover of one woman, one wife. I would say there's, there's no other, that, that, that there, there is nobody on the planet that would ever replace her, ever. And that I found in, the, in her all that God wanted for me. And, um, and I mean that. I, 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 I say that all the time. I say that to... Anybody who would listen if they ask that question. Uh, I found what, I, what, what made me whole, you know, and, um, and the Lord said the two shall become one flesh. Marie fills up all the gaps of my life in, in the way that makes me a better man. It makes me complete. And so, you know, we're, we're just, um, we're very, we're, you know, we play and stuff, but yes. in all deep seriousness, you know, there's nobody else for me. There could never yeah. be anybody else for and me. And for me, too. And there's so we're just complete. So we're, she's everything I need. And he is, too, to me, everything. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and we love, we, we love to talk and sit together. Mm -hmm. And that leads exactly into my next question. <laughs> uh, how often do you sit down together and, and simply just visit with one another? Always. We're yes. so old, we can't walk. <laughs> All the time. Just kind of sit down and look at each other. <laughs> All the time. All the time. You want to get up? No, I can't get up. Do you want to get up? That, oh. that, the very first date Marie and I went on, oh. uh, the very first date, I picked her up. A friend of mine and I, Nikki and I and his girlfriend picked mm -hmm. Marie up and, and we spent the day together and we came home. Uh, I came home at uh, 11 
We brought her home at 11 at night. We picked her up around 11 in the um, in the morning, and 12 hours later, we uh, I'm dropping her off, and I went into her apartment. She had uh, a couple of roommates, and so I came in, and these were girls who were coming to Bible studies I was teaching at that time, mm -hmm. and um, I stayed there until one, and then went home. So it was like 13 hours of continuous talking. Marie and I have never had a time when from the very first date that we didn't just bend each other's ears. Mm -hmm. We have That's talked right. and we always, we've been doing that since I took her out for the very first time and we've never stopped. So John, for me, you know, this uh, coronavirus quarantine, for Marie and me, I have to be honest with you, it's no different mm -hmm. than what we are normally used to. I come home from the office and she's there and and it, it, there's no difference to us. We, we haven't had to get to know one another because some people right now, they're so busy with their jobs and their outside life, they don't know that person they're living with. They really don't. There's a stranger in the house that they never realized was there, and so are their children. Their children are strangers to them because they never talk to them, never share with them, never spend time with them because they're so busy with other things. We don't have that problem. We never have. Sure. Marie and I have always visited every day, you know, to this day, you know, for many years, we will have a cup of coffee mm -hmm. in the morning and just enjoy each other, watch the news. We don't have to be talking incessantly, which we don't. Sometimes she's just doing what she does and I'm doing what I do. And we're so connected that um, we're very content. That's right. You know, I told my son Dave, David, uh, my son David Aaron was over, at, he was in the house, and I was talking to him, and, and, and Marie and I are not openly affectionate uh, in, in the way that sometimes people are, you know, those people who kiss on the beach and stuff, you know, that disgusts me, you know, <laughs> yeah, it that really me makes too. me sick, <laughs> you know, but we're not that way, we're not, and I was telling him, I said, you know, uh, Dave, I said, you know, your mama and I, we're, we're pretty much reserved when it comes to affection. He says, no, you're not, Dad. And I said, what do you mean? He says, no, you're not. You're not reserved in that way at all. I said, why do you say that? He says, look at your feet. And we're sitting on the couch. Marie and I are sitting on the couch, and I'm holding her foot with my foot. <laughs> he said, Dad, every time you sit down next to Mom, you've got your foot on hers every time. When I go to bed at night, I put my hand over, and I touch her hand, and I yes. hold it every night. Mm -hmm. That's us, you know. So we're connected. You know, we are very deeply connected, very attached to each other. Not in the that weird kind of possessive way that sometimes people have, but just in that, you know, if she comes in the room, I'm happy. You know, I'm more complete because she's there with me. You know, that's just us. And we've been that way, gosh, I don't... I think all our life, you know, all our, all our from lives. From the beginning. We, we just... From the beginning. Like a magnet, you know, bang, we like that, ooh, we're like that, you know. <laughs> it's true. You know, I'm that way. I, I, you know, when I fall in love, it's forever. And uh, I'm in love, you know, and, and, and that's so just the way it is, you know, <laughs> and it's forever. And that's a good thing, I'd say. That's what God designed, right? He said the two shall become one flesh. And we are. We really are. My kids see that. Yes, they do. They know that. There's nobody but but Mama for me. And the church sees it. I, I believe that it's been a wonderful testimony to our fellowship. They they know that their pastor qualifies. He's a one-woman man, and they know that. There's this, yes. Yeah, and I think that brings a security into the church that, uh, you know, like in a family, it, it's good when a, a, a kid knows that Daddy loves Mama. Mm -hmm. It's it's just good. Mm -hmm. My dad loved my mother. yes. My dad sure loved did. my mother, adored her, and uh, I grew up with that. I saw that. I saw what a man loving a woman, I saw what that meant. He never lectured me. He never said, this is how, son, you should love your wife. He just loved his. And it was the little things he did that taught me to do the same. And it's those little things that have helped me to become a better man, you know, to learn to respect this woman, to 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 cherish her, to to be the the warrior for her, to be her hero, you know, to be her her covering, to be her spiritual leader, to to be everything she needs. That's what I was designed to be, 
And, uh, and I think I've succeeded in that with this woman. I really do. And she has succeeded in what God designed her to be in my life. And, you know, so it's just, it's biblical. It's just what God said. And we just take his word and we apply it. You know, she's never, she's never known me outside of being a man who wants to do what is right. No, that doesn't mean I've always done right. I haven't. I've had my seasons where, where I wasn't the man I was supposed to be. In the early days of our relationship, I was, and then, I, then I'd be, you know, not what I'm supposed to be. And I, I was still growing up as a Christian and as a man. But at a certain point in, in our marriage, I, I realized um, she deserves more than I am. And one of the things that uh, I believe and I teach, you know, is that... Um, you know, that, that, that my wife's love, my wife's love has made me want to um, be worthy of it. You know, I, want, I, I, I don't want to be the man that, that people look at in a pulpit, but he's not really that way at home. I think hypocrisy smells in the nostrils mm -hmm. of God, mm -hmm. and it's not something that uh, I want to ever be. I don't want to be the hypocrite. And so... I made up my mind um, many years ago that this woman will never, ever have any reason to want another man in her life, ever. You know, I'm going to be that man. I'm going to be that hero. I'm going to be that protector. I'm going to be that provider. I'm going to be that priest. I'm going to be that man. And I am. I am that man by God's grace. And it, it doesn't mean I've arrived forever. It simply means that today I am, and I plan on being it tomorrow. And she's the same way with me. She's, she's, I'm her, I'm her husband. I'm her man. There's no, there's, we've never mistrusted no. each other. There's never okay. been. I know she loves me. She, you know, this is a woman who, who is faithful and true. She's the virtuous woman. Proverbs thirty-one. She really is. She's, she's made me what I am in many ways. She really has. Her goodness has made me desire to be better. And I think any wife who wants to have a good man, I would pray that her husband sees her that way, the way I see mine, because she deserves better than I am. Therefore, in God's grace, I'll be a better man. And, I, and I've been working in the Lord, asking him to strengthen me to that end for many years, for many years. Mm. Well, I just really believed in Dave. I really believed he could do whatever... I, I really believed him in him in his walk with the Lord and 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 um and I, and I think women today need to believe in their husbands. Mm. They need to encourage their husbands, not tear them down mm -hmm. and tell them what they're not doing, but what they are doing and and give them encouragement. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these guys are out there, and there are women giving them encouragement. And the wife isn't. Mm -hmm. And we need to give our husbands encouragement. They need to know that we love them unconditionally and that, uh, that um, they, they come home to us and want to come home to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of security. When you have a good marriage, your home is a secure place. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the one safe place mm -hmm. that, you, that you have that you know you're safe in. You know, at night when you're together, you're safe together. Yes. There's just a uh, an emotional security to that 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 I really really appreciate. And and Marie used a word right now that to me is a very important word. She says she believed. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there she does. You know, she believes in me. You know, and I believe in her. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody right now is saying, "Well, you're supposed to only believe in God." Well, that's because <laughs> you're not thinking. <laughs> Right. You know, you believe. I believe in my wife. I believe in the goodness of God in her, and I and I and I, I believe that that she can be whatever God wants her to be, and I believe in the strength of the power of the Spirit to transform lives. Mm -hmm. And Marie, you know, she has shown me that from the beginning. I mentioned earlier that in the early days of our marriage, I was I was still a young man and I was still a young believer. I mean, sometimes people don't realize that they don't know me well enough to know that I was a young believer when Marie and I got together. I mean, I got saved at the age of 20, but I went in the military for two years. I didn't have discipling. I, I joined a group called the Navigators, and that helped me, but I didn't have a church that I was uh, attending or serving in. I didn't have anything like that. 
So when I got out of the service, I was still a, really a novice Christian, even though I had opportunities to grow under the Navigator ministry. And so I, I met Marie eventually, and, you know, we, we dated, we got married, um, but I still was still trying to, I was still not mature. I was still trying to grow up. When you, when you do drugs, and John, you know what I mean by this, when you take drugs, do drugs, you don't grow up. You have kind of a, a stifling of ordinary things that would have matured you. When you're avoiding that by being drunk or loaded all the time and you're not growing up as a man and holding down a job and providing for others and being trustworthy and growing, which I didn't, I was still emotionally very young. I was still a teenager in many ways when Marie and I got married because I had stifled years of, of my life by by doing drugs and partying and things like that. And now I'm trying to grow up, hold the job, go to school and do all those things. And so Marie's pregnant with Corinne and we're living in a little apartment uh, in Roland Heights and and uh, I'm, I'm not making hardly any money at all. And she's having to provide most of the income through her job. And, and yet she's pregnant with Corinne and she's gonna have to quit. And I don't have any future as I'm looking at it at that time. And I got depressed and, and for me, the only way that that I could deal with my emotions for a long time because you you know you understand this John is um, I I drank you know and I I would just drink you know just for a moment I just wouldn't be thinking about that I, I and that's what I do and so I didn't do it all the time and I had gotten saved out of a you know a drug and alcohol background and I wasn't doing it all the time Marie never really saw me that way no, I've never had. and here I am sitting in a little cheap front room sitting on a ten dollar sofa with a ninety dollar tv set and a you know a sixty dollar dinette set and i had i didn't have two nickels to rub together and i didn't have a job and you know i'm work trying to go to school and trying to find something for my life and now i've got a pregnant wife what am i gonna do and i couldn't take it anymore i just i didn't know how to cast my cares on the lord yet and i was i was young and immature and i went to the store bought some beer you know, and I began to drink. She'd never seen this. Didn't say a word to me. Didn't say a word to me. I'm sitting in the front room drinking beer. Then I go and buy some more, and I drank some more. And then I started feeling, you know, the effects of the alcohol. And I went upstairs, and I climbed in the bed. We didn't even have a bed. We had a pull-out sofa <laughs> that we opened up um, that my dad had given to me, and we slept on that. It was a sofa bed. And... Um, and I opened it up, and I laid down on it, and I started to cry. And, and I cried so hard, and so hard. Then I put the pillow over my face so she wouldn't hear me. <sighs> and I heard her footsteps as they were coming up the stairway. The door was closed, and it opened up, and there's this little pregnant wife standing there at the door. And she sees me weeping. And she sat down next to me on the, on the bed, on our sofa bed. And she picked me up and scooped me into her arms and said, what's wrong? And I said, I'm a failure. You married the wrong man. I'm so sorry. I failed you. She whispered in my ear as she rocked me like a child, John. She said, you're not a failure. God is going to use you. I believe in you. It changed my life. It changed my life. I believe in you. And I turned around and look where we are right now. Yeah, faithful. God, mm -hmm. I believe. So she believes in me. <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> and and sure as do. you're sharing that, as a husband myself, to hear something like that from our wives, mm -hmm. so big and so mon monumental that I don't understand if the wives truly understand the impact of that statement, I believe in you, and what it does. Changed my life. Nobody ever had. Nobody ever had. But she did. So why would I want someone else? Why? Nobody else could ever be that. That That is powerful and we as part of the church we see you up there week in and week out and, and we see you guys 
married together and, and, and you share these years to hear something like that. I know somebody is watching right now that needed to hear this. They needed to hear this. That needed to, to see that wives believe in your husbands and, and husbands make yourself the hero to our wives. And so as we wrap up, I, I would like to ask, what encouragement would you bring to the couples maybe who are watching or are going through a difficult time, to the couples of our church? What would you guys bring as encouragement as Pastor David and Marie encouraging those in our church? You got a word, baby? Well, I think we need to encourage our husbands. I mean, some of them are, have lost jobs right now. And I know there's stresses in their in their family. You know, they're stressing they're stressing over it. But I I think the woman needs to encourage the husband that he can do it. We're gonna get we're gonna get through this. You know, we have a big God. You know, He's gonna get us through. That doesn't mean we're not gonna go through difficulties. But God is faithful. We have a God who's who's faithful. He has our interest our best interest in His hands. And uh, um, and women, we need to encourage our husband. For me, I, I didn't think anything of it. It was something that I know him. I love him. I know what his potential was. I know what he could do. And going up there and holding on, it was natural. And I had faith in him. And, and women, you need to have faith in your husband. Build him up. It's not time to, don't you tear him down. He needs to be built up. And I think by building him up, he will re respond to you through that. And um, I'm just thankful for my for the for the husband that my hus for the husband that God gave me. I'm blessed. I don't I would never want to be anywhere else but right here next to him. Not even Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Not even Hawaii. <laughs> Not even Hawaii. We're just next to you here. You know, we um <laughs> the day I met Marie, the day I met her, she wasn't saved. Mm -hmm. She came to a Bible study, <laughs> and uh, she sat down on the couch next to me after the study. Yeah. She's real friendly, and she said to me, um, you know, what's your sign? <laughs> you <know? laughs> what's your sign? And I said, the fish. And she said, oh, you're a Pisces. Because she was going to college at that time, and that was, that was the big thing, horoscope and this and that. And she's not saved. So I said, no, I said, um, I'm not into astrology, I said, and junk like that. I said, I'm a follower of Christ. I said, the fish I'm speaking about is the ichthus, the symbol of Christianity. And so she goes, oh, you know, and kind of like, she was a college kind of flighty and uh, silly. And so I, I just looked at this girl and Talked to her for a little while and got in my car with my sister to drive home because I was driving from Norwalk to Ontario at that time to teach a Bible study in Ontario. And I turned to my sister Madeline, even though Marie was not yet saved, and I said, I just met the girl I'm going to marry. I knew it. Now, Madeline brought you to faith about three weeks later yes. in a Bible study. My, my sister, sister led her to, to Christ. And then... Then, after she was saved, we started dating, and we've never been apart since mm -hmm. then. I've never kissed another woman, never romantically uh, held hands with another woman. It's only been Marie. I mean, that was it for me. You know, I'm a one-woman man. That's what I am, and she's the same with me. That's right. And so um, I would say that for me— um, like I've said, I believe that a good woman makes me want to be a better man. And when she believes the way she does, that God's going to use me, that hasn't come naturally. That has come because she has seen God use me. That's right. She was sitting at the, at the dinner table, and she's the one who sorts through the bills and does the bills for us. Mm -hmm. I, I bring the check, and, and she spends the money. <laughs> <laughs> and she's sitting at the... Uh, at the dinner table many years ago now. I think our church had just begun. Yes, yes, very, yeah, And, early, and I walk early in, early. And, and, and she's, she's crying mm -hmm. at the table. And I said, what's wrong? She said, honey, we don't have the money to pay our bills. And I said, my God shall supply. My God shall supply 
my God is able. I said, I trust him. I said, Maria, I'm looking for work because I had just resigned my position as an assistant. We didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm, I'm looking for work. I'm doing the best I can. I'm going to provide for this family. But you need to know my God shall supply. And when the mailman came as I was speaking and I went and pulled the mail, came back, opened up the mail, there was a check there, a cashier's check for $200. And I put it in front of her, and I said, my God shall supply mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. my needs. It's incredible. And it's things like that mm -hmm. that we've had over the years, things like that over the years, where we have seen our God who has supplied in every way, John, in every way. And Marie and I, we can look back at a little teeny apartment that altogether, that apartment was probably 360 square feet. Mm -hmm. That's where our Bible study was. Wow. That's where I met her, in a little apartment. So now we've got 100,000 square feet of building. We had a handful of people in my first studies. Now God has brought more than a handful here. I, I, was, I was just some, some, some young guy just saying, we got to be used by God. Let's find a way for Jesus to, to be able to use my life. And the rest is history. And like when Marie says, it's been a nice ride. Mm -hmm. It has, it's been bumpy sometimes. It's been difficult. We were very happy then we had kids. You know, it, it was, it's been busy and difficult in many ways. Yes. Many, many, many tears, many brokenness, broken times, many hurts, many, many betrayals, many, you name it. We've gone through it. But all through it, we've had God and we've had each other. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's, that's what it is. And like I, my dad told me one day, he said, son, before there was a David, there was your mom. And when there's no longer a David, there's still your mom. She's first in my life. Well, that's how I am with this girl. And before there was my children and even my beautiful babies, my grandbabies, there was mama. And when everybody's gone, there's still mama. And that's what it means that the two shall become the one flesh. And that's what we have. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. I, I'm church family. I know you guys have joined, enjoyed this. And, you know, you just sparked a little interest in me. Maybe our next interview, we can talk about being parents uh, and uh, go down that uh, to hear what you guys have to say. Again, it, it's a special time for me to even be able to have and host and interview you both. Just as so many people in our church, we love you. I love you. My family loves you. The church loves you. So thank you for all you do, and thank you for being the faithful model to all our marriages. And uh, we couldn't ask for a better pastor and, mm. and a better Marie mm. than you, Marie. So thank you, and we love you. Thank, thank you, John. Love you. love you, too. Love you all.